All right. Hello. Hello. Happy Tuesday. It is a windy, rainy, stormy day here on the West Coast. And uh, we've actually had our power go out in the last hour. So fingers crossed, <laughs> we get to spend time together. All right. I'm just making sure that I didn't turn this thing on to private again, like I did a couple weeks ago. Okay, cool. There's some people joining. So hello and welcome. Uh, it is Tuesday, and we're talking about tips for building your brand with a book. Uh, a book is one of the absolute best branding tools there is. It positions you, and when you're writing it, it helps you clarify your message. And really, when your book is out, in many ways, it levels the playing field for you to be on the same playing field as other experts in your industry. And done well, it actually elevates you above those experts, so you become the go-to expert. This isn't something that happens automatically, though, just like when you post your book on Amazon, it doesn't automatically sell. So today we're going to cover some tips to really use your book to build your brand, whether it's a company brand or a personal brand, um, you're you're really using your book as a tool to make these things happen. So it should be a fun session today. I'm really excited about some of the things that I have to share with you. Um, but first, if you're new here, let me encourage you to say hello. And of course, participate in the chat like we already have. We've got Efren, Kevin 2.0, Kevin the original, <laughs> Derek Silksky, Angela, Matt. Hello and welcome all of you. So it's great to have you here. Um, and Efren, that's great. So he, by saying you've got me, I hope that means that if my power goes out and you lose me, you're going to take over, right? <laughs> no pressure, right? You're ready to talk book branding. <laughs> okay, awesome. So and Latonia's here too. Great to see you. So yeah, if you're new here, um, definitely say hello and participate in the chat because there's always prizes for being here and saying hello. And of course, participating. So go ahead, drop your greeting in the chat if you haven't already. And if you're on the replay, you can still post in the comments because no matter what kind of a video it is, when you comment the day a video is released, you get entered to win some of our book launcher swag, like our hashtag no boring books mug, uh, which is here. I was actually drinking coffee out of it this morning. So I'm going to carefully lift it so we don't spill. And our journal, which I actually think I have inside at the moment. Uh, and you also get one step closer to being a YouTube bestie where you can win hoodies and some sweet swag that we haven't unveiled yet. And we're nearing that 25,000 subscriber mark. And we're also getting really close to a 2 million views mark. Um, and that is going to be a big party where we're going to unveil our brand new swag, which nobody at my team, at my company, knows what it is. Nobody else knows except for Angela and myself. So it's pretty top secret swag that's coming. I'm really excited to reveal that. Okay, and before we dive in, just one more thing. Um, on Saturday, so October 17th, we're going to be doing another deep dive training. So this is when we get together for two hours and uh, it's usually myself and one or two of my team members because honestly, uh, I'm the one that talks about all the work that they do, but they're the ones that do the work. So it's really fun for me to have them uh, jump on the deep dive training so you can see them and really learn straight from the experts, the people who are inside of the systems, inside the books every single day, um, get their tips and advice. So on Saturday, we're doing another deep dive training. And Saturday's training topic is all things Amazon. So we're going to talk about your Amazon Author Central page. We're going to talk about keywords, your book descriptions, Amazon ads, and answer any Amazon questions that you have. I'm going to have our production manager, Jacqueline Kyle, there. And also, I believe, our online marketing specialist and our course builder, uh, Jacob Pinky. Pink Pinkney will also be in the house. Um, he is the one who does Amazon ads for our clients. Uh, and he does, when he goes deep into something, he goes really deep. So he has been down that Amazon ad rabbit hole in a big way. <laughs> so he has lots of cool things to share with you. So that's happening Saturday to register booklaunchers.com to get our newsletter, um, which you really should get if you aren't on our newsletter list. Uh, or you can go to the community tab on YouTube and there's a link there to register. It's free, but you do have to register and you have to be there live. There's no replay. Um, that's one of the things we do. Uh, we share amazing content, but you have to be there live to join us. Okay, let's get right to it. So first, we're talking, for those of you who've just joined in, do say hello. And uh, we're talking about using a book to build your brand. And the very first thing is you have to stand out to build a brand. And this is maybe sounds like a funny one, but... We run into a lot of folks who want to write a book, but then they 
fight us when we're trying to help them write a great book. They, they, they want to write a book that is safe. Um, and it's not going to be interesting. And remember, we're all about hashtag no boring books here. So we want your book to have that little edge, that little something that's going to make you stand out. And the reality is, if you want to have an impact, and most of our clients are driven, you know, in part by the potential of what a book can do for them financially, but they're also really driven to have an impact on others. And in order to have an impact, you must stand out. But when you stand out, you'll be judged. And I believe that's why public speaking is one of the greatest fears, because I mean, we're not afraid of opening our mouth and talking. Most of us do that probably more than we should. So it's not a fear of talking to other people. It's a fear of standing on that stage and being judged for what's coming out of your mouth. And the same thing happens when you write a book. A lot of people are afraid of what other people will say. They're afraid of those Amazon reviews. Um, <laughs> YouTube, um, there are some very, very special viewers out there who have criticized my hair, the sound of my voice, the things I have said. Uh, it just happens, right? Um, here's here's one just kind of side note, not even a side note, but here's what you, first of all, if you want to have an impact, you have to stand out. So you are going to be judged. But here's what I always kind of take home at the end of the day is the people who judge and criticize you are not the ones achieving greatness. Creating success and having a lasting positive impact on others, <laughs> that's not them. I have, whenever I get a really particularly mean or biting comment on YouTube in particular, I click on over to see, you know, what's going on on their channel, because maybe, maybe I have something to learn from them. And I have not, there's not a single example where I've gotten a mean comment or critical comment from somebody who has more than 100 subscribers. So, the people, the, the people who have influence, the people with big brands, those people are way too busy to criticize you. They know how hard it is to put yourself out there. So they're not going to judge you, um, even if you could do it better. <laughs> and by the way, the vast majority of people want you to succeed and will support you. I mean, look at the very first comment today. I, I said, hey, I just lost my power in the last hour. I don't know. Hey, that rhymes. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen. And Efren's like, we got you. Like most people, I mean, you guys are particularly amazing folks, the folks that hang out at book launchers, uh, you know, you're my besties, a lot of you. Um, but look at that kind of support. The vast majority of people really do want to support you. Um, so really try not to let those people uh, that are going to criticize you or judge you hold you back. And really, if you think you're going to write a book and launch it and have a brand without having to do the work that will make you stand out from the crowd, it's not how it works. You're not going to get a brand that way. You have to do the work so people know you exist, so they know your book exists. Um, but the good news is, with that book, it's almost like a magical tool that will help you get out there and get noticed. So, uh, so that's just tip number one. We've got some other cool stuff to cover, and I'll recap all of this and put it all together at the end. Um, but I want to kick this off right away with a prize. So let's celebrate everyone who was here early. And since it's um, it's October 13th, I had to look at my calendar. Um, I can't believe it's October 13th already. Um, so Angela, let's grab the 13th person that said hello, if we can, um, or said something in the chat, and then we're going to give you a prize. How does that sound, my friends? Um, all right, saying hello. Who, oh, wow. Awesome here. Hush to roar. Um, loves the deep dive. See, we've been doing the deep dive since March. Uh, we started them when we were all kind of locked in our homes when when COVID really hit us. And uh, we took a little break in the summer, but there was so much demand and they were so popular that we brought them back once a month. So glad I hope you're going to be there, Hush to Roar. Um, let's talk Boaz. Um, Jasmine, hello. Wonderful. Um, okay, let's see. Jasmine, Latonia, great. All right, you guys, you're awesome. Uh, Mary Lynn Turner, uh, let's see. <laughs> May not be those people that but they do want to help. Most people do want to help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, as always, it was Kevin 2.0. <laughs> Kevin, I don't know if you were going to keep this run up. <laughs> so just so you guys know, Kevin 2.0, commented diligently for, I don't know, six, I don't know, six, seven weeks. I don't even, Kevin can tell you to try and win a, uh, a journal or something. Um, Cause I think he has a mug already, but uh, like his own special mug. He didn't want a book launcher's mug. He commented, commented, didn't win, didn't win. And then I swear he wins every single time now. And he wants to save up his karma so he can get this cool new swag that's coming out. Uh, but uh, we're going to say if, if your luck can... <laughs> 
hold, Kevin. So uh, draw again, please. Uh, so let's just pick the next the next one after that. So the 14th comment was hush to roar. Fantastic. So all you have to do is email us at team at booklaunchers.com and let us know if you want a mug or a journal and make sure you include your mailing address because we don't just psychically know where to mail these things. So um, Angela will go ahead and uh, put, start a mug business. You could start selling these to all the people who don't win. Hey, Kevin, because <laughs> you could have had one almost every single week. So, uh, okay. Uh, awesome. So congratulations. Okay. So back to branding with your book. The second point I want to make is that in order for your book to work, to build a brand, you have to write a book that's going to define your new brand and to define you really. Um, one of the things we spend time with before you start writing your book, if you work with book launchers, is we really try to figure out how to brand yourself. And just to kind of give you a couple over the top examples, I mean, think about it ZZ Top or ZZ Top. <laughs> Sorry, Canadian. Um, it's a Canadian joke for you. Uh, they would be just another band with beards, uh, without the beards. Lady Gaga, she wouldn't have made so many outfits, or uh, she wouldn't have made so many headlines without those outfits. Uh, William Nye, you guys know who he is, right? But he was just another scientist until he labeled himself Bill Nye the Science Guy. Uh, I've called myself Julie the book broad for a reason to brand myself in the book world, um, especially for me, because I came from a real estate background and I was quite well known in Canada in the real estate space. Uh, it was very challenging for me, actually, in Canada. I think it really helped me that I moved to the States and redefined myself in a new country. Um, because while I was in Canada, and even to this day, I get contacted from people wanting real estate coaching, wanting real estate support. Um, I was very well branded in the real estate space. So now I'm Julie the Book Broad. Um, so how do you want to be known in the marketplace? This is something you really have to think about. And you have to think about also, how will you be memorable? Um, your book is a tremendous opportunity to define yourself. So you want to spend some time thinking about it. And I love the, um, I learned many years ago, actually, it's kind of side, a little side tangent for you. This is the fun of live. But um, 2008 was when I quit my job and decided to start building a real estate training and education company and going full time in real estate. A lovely timing for, yeah, I know. Um, but uh, my parents, I think, were a little terrified of, of what I was doing. So they sent me to learn from a man named Keith Cunningham. He's kind of a business training mentor. And one of the things he taught, um, which I think he actually originated with Zig Ziglar, and he just built upon it, but it's be, do, uh, sorry, it's like who you be comes first. And so it's be, do, have. And it's really the opposite. It was one of those kind of aha moments for me, because it's really the opposite of what most people do when we pursue our goals. We think if we have X, we will do Y, and then we will be Z. For example, I thought when I have an MBA, I can do a job that will pay me six figures, and then I will be successful, have freedom, have money, etc. Well, of course, six figures actually doesn't really make you that financially secure, depends on what city you're in. But it doesn't work quite that way anyways. And in fact, it actually takes you in the wrong direction. Um, and, and you see this with authors because some people think they have to have a perfect story. So they already have to have achieved a pinnacle of success or some other huge milestone before they write a book to become that known expert. You need material for your book. But if you're waiting to have something before you do something so you can be someone, it's not going to happen. So you have to figure out who you want to be first. So before you write that book, define who you want to be. Um, and that dictates what you do. And really, ultimately, it will dictate what you have. So if you want a book that grows your brand and really positions you as an expert, you got to think about who you want to be as that expert. Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to help? How are you going to help them? And what makes you unique? What's going to be your outrageous costume <laughs> to put the Lady Gaga spin on it or to, you know, the Bill Nye, the science guy, Julie, the book broad. <clears throat> really, how are you going to define yourself? And a lot of us, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a water break for a moment, shall we? And a lot of us don't do this because either we're resisting who we really are, or it goes back to that judgment thing. We're, we're afraid of not being liked. And I get it. Uh, high school largely teaches us all to hide our opinions, dress like everybody else, and not appear like you're trying too hard. 
even MBA school and business school, which I, I did the <laughs> the funny thing of doing an undergrad in business. And then, you know, for added points, even though they teach you almost the same thing, I did an MBA, uh, but they teach you even, they tell you what color of a suit to wear to which interview. So they're really telling you what to look like in many cases. So I understand why people hold back, but if you hold back the good stuff, it's going to make brand building very difficult because that's the very thing that makes you memorable and will help you build that brand. So you have to start there. So what makes you unique? How are you going to stand out? What do you want to be known for before you even write that book? Those are hard questions. You might need help with it. Um, but that's really important if you want this book to be a great tool for you to become known in your marketplace. Um, so then now, <laughs> now that you have that identity, you've built that brand, you've defined yourself. The third tip I have is that you ultimately have to use it. Now you have this new identity as an author, you have to go out and use it. Um, and one of the things that I discovered really as I made my shift to my author identity in 2013, when my book, my book More Than Cashflow came out, was that I went from being in the audience to being on the stage. So now I was one of the featured experts in the magazines, speaking, being interviewed by the media. And the people that I used to follow up and look up to were people like me. It was kind of interesting how it didn't happen immediately, but over the course of the year following my book launch, it did happen. Um, but I did something that a lot of people don't do. And I made sure that my book was in the hands of event organizers, media. I was writing and submitting articles for magazines and blogs like you would not believe. I submitted for every speaking engagement that seemed remotely relevant. I was constantly doing things to get my book out there. And when you write a book, the thing that you may not realize is you now have the tool that is the evidence of your expertise. You can write, you can say, I wrote the book on and your email will be more likely to move to the top of the pile. In many speaking applications, it doesn't say what, uh, it doesn't say, have you written a book? It says, what books have you written? It's assumed that if you're going to be speaking, you've written books on this subject. Um, and that's why also, by the way, it's super powerful when you're not known to write a niche book that will make you be known as the person in a smaller kind of solution or category. It's so much easier than trying to enter into a marketplace and be the person in a big general category. So trying to enter and being the person in leadership or the person in personal finance or the person in personal branding, that's really tricky. Um, but if you go in and be really niche, it can make a big difference. And and I just got this book, so I'll show it to you guys, because it's different than our normal. <laughs> it's bigger, it's in color, it's it's quite a unique thing. So hopefully you guys can see it. Um, it's called Tactical Lock Picking, a Systemized Approach for Responding to Locked Obstacles During Emergencies. Um, and it's by Pat Watson. When we were pitching him to, uh, you know, to get first book launch, to get exposure, uh, the people in the space of firefighting training were all over it. It was a heck yes, we want him and this book because it's clear he's their guy. He is the guy on locked pick, lock picking in emergency situations. And he has the process and the strategy. It is an obvious thing. So it's not, it's not an enormous marketplace, but if you can be the person in a marketplace for this, you can really position yourself for success. Um, so I'm just going to check you guys to make sure you saw all that. Here we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> new swag. <laughs> Sorry, I just got I just got distracted by Kevin saying new swag, new swag. <laughs> um, so okay, I'll come back to your question. I just saw let's talk Boaz um, his question. So Angela's here. Um, she's on my team. She'll make sure that I answer any questions that I don't get to because I'm going to I'm going to try and hit the content. Um, and then I'll come back for those questions. The, the short answer is no. Um, but but it's a no but <laughs> there's more. Um, and that's actually a good topic potentially for a future deep dive training on pitching yourself for speaking engagements. We do have a great video um, with one of our clients, Robert Bell. He did a great breakdown on what he's done to pitch himself for podcast interviews. So you can check that out. Uh, it came out a couple of weeks ago, uh, but that's a really, really good one for, for getting tips on how to pitch yourself for podcast interviews. And it's not that different when you pitch yourself for speaking engagements, but there are some differences. Um, so just one more example about this niche thing, because I find a lot of people are afraid to go niche. 
Uh, and so I'm going to give an example from the personal finance space where we have done a lot of books in the finance space, largely because my first book was a real estate book. Uh, and it really kind of positioned us to feed into the finance space. I also have a MBA in finance. <laughs> so there's lots of finance in, in my background, which made a lot of our early clients finance books, which of course leads to more finance books. Um, but Eric Brotman, uh, he has a book coming out on Thursday, which we're really excited for his launch. Uh, Don't Retire, Graduate is his book. And he wrote it to position himself beautifully in a crowded personal space as the guy who will help you transition from your career into a really uh, great time in your life that he doesn't define as retirement. Because for so many people now, retirement isn't you're done working. It's you're starting something new or you're doing it in a different way. And he has a really, really great spin on things. And he takes you through it like you're still in school. So, you know, here's your freshman year. Here's your sophomore year. Here's your junior year. Here's your senior year. And he walks you through what it's like and your options. And, and really it's about a new beginning. It is not retirement to a lot of people is the end of work, but he doesn't see it as that it's, it's the beginning of a new kind of phase in your life. Kind of like university is the beginning of a new phase in your life too. So it's a very, very cool approach to make him different. And it's really defined his entire brand. If you look him up, he's got a podcast on this. He's already, even though his book doesn't come out till Thursday, he's already doing media on that because they love this message. And it fits for so many people now who aren't just doing a, a cold stop or a hard stop on their retirement. Um, now, so one of the things is this is tricky um, and it's uncomfortable. And a lot of people start this, but they get afraid to ask for it. And that's where hiring a company like Book Launchers, who does a lot of the asking for you can really help. So you can hire, there's also podcast booking companies. Of course, there's PR people who will do media, um, but it's, it does help a lot. And that's one of the reasons I started the company is because I did do, I did do all of this for myself and it was uncomfortable because it requires you to really talk yourself up in certain situations. And it's much easier for me to have someone else do that on my behalf. And if you haven't been to one of our deep dive trainings where you have met our book marketing manager, Sarah Bean, and watched her absolutely light up when I surprise her by talking about one of our clients and I'll go, oh, actually, so-and-so, and she'll just light up as she talks about them because she gets so excited. And that's the kind of thing you want somebody who's doing that. And if you're not able to do that on your own behalf, you may want to get help. Um, you know, it's like uh, Tim Testa, he's our story expert. He, he says he falls a little bit in love with every single one of our clients. And you want somebody like that advocating for you. And if that person isn't you, you may want to get help. But ultimately, I just encourage you to really think about what you want, what you offer, who you're suited to help. And realize that it's a gift that you are sharing with others. And so you really should feel like shouting it from the rooftops because you want to have an impact. You want to help others. And you're only going to do that when they know about you. And now you have this amazing tool to help them. So you're not selling them like a big consulting package or some expensive course. You have a book. It's very accessible for the majority of people to get a book and it can help them. So there is an art to sharing that. I'm going to touch on that in the next point. But first, we have prizes. So of course, every uh, when it when you comment the day a video comes out, which is every Tuesday and Friday, including the replays. So if you're watching the replay it counts. so make sure you do leave a comment, uh, you get entered to win book launcher swag. So I've gone ahead and entered everybody into that has commented in the past two weeks on the videos on Tuesday or Friday. And I've entered you all into the random name drawer. So I'm gonna just hit the button. And it's spinning around right now as I see all the names coming through. And our winner today is Kresha Spence. So I don't know if she's here live, but she comments on every single video. And I don't think she's won before. So congratulations, Kresha. And hopefully I'm saying your name right. Uh, just email us at team at booklaunchers.com and let us know if you want the journal or the mug and where we should mail it to. And thank you so much for your comments. I really, really appreciate that you uh, you comment on, I'm pretty sure, every single video uh, for the last few months anyways. So thank you so much. Um, cool. So just checking in with you guys. Um, let's see. I like his attitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Um, it's better to be a YouTube bestie than a mug winner. Well, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if all the YouTube besties have won mugs, but thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. It looks like we had some administration work going on. Hey, Ben, good to, good to see you here. That's awesome. And Kevin says, Robert Bell's video is the bomb and Angela linked to it over there um, in the comments. So 
uh, you can catch that video. So I highly recommend it. It's really, really good. Uh, and now, since I'll just take a quick pause, we have one more point to make. Um, but let's talk, Boaz said, do you have something with a script to pitch for speaking engagements, especially for speaking on social media platforms? So um, I'm not sure if you mean speaking on the topic of social media platforms or speaking on social media platforms. So doing YouTube lives, Facebook lives, um, whatever else is out there. <laughs> just through a blank Instagram. There we go. Um, so I mean, what it, the thing with scripts is that it doesn't tailor it to the organization. And ultimately, if you looked at our pitches, there's a really short, just couple of lines that are really, really pointed to that particular organization event, etc. Uh, as the conversation goes on, so they write back and they say, yes, I'm interested, send me a copy of the book, send me something, then you might give them more. But a script really isn't going to do what you need to do. And that is you need to know the organization that you're pitching and what they're looking for, and how you fit into that. So one, one tip I can offer is if you see, for example, um, they've had a certain speaker on that uh, has a topic that's close to what you talk about, but you have a slightly different spin that will benefit their audience in a slightly different way, then you could just say, hey, I noticed at your last event, you had um, Julie brought on and she spoke about X. Uh, and I speak about something similar, but here's how I do it a little bit differently. And then you can kind of go from there. Um, you don't want to write too much. And then you could have a bio, you could have a media kit. We have a speaker's one sheet that we create for our clients. And we would attach that. And then they usually would write back and say, you know, can I get a copy of your book? Can I learn more? Most events, though, for speaking engagements in particular, they have forms to fill out. So you'll have to complete the form with a pitch with your name, um, your talk title, and your um, talk summary. And you really need to make it benefit driven and also do your research, see what they've had in the past. And if you can have something, again, similar, but a little different, so a slightly different hook, um, think Eric Brotman, right? He's still talking about how to retire with financial security, <laughs> but he's talking about it in a different way. He's talking about it being the new beginning, the start of the new phase in your life. And here's how you can approach it. So that gives it that little bit of a spin. So you got to have that. But for speaking engagements, I mean, the vast majority of speaking opportunities, you're going to be filling out a form. Um, when you're at the phase where you're pitching that kind of thing, you're usually it's usually an agent that is doing that kind of pitching, um, or it's coming through connections. And it's the same approach. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, but long scripts won't help. Um, Andrea, thank you. She said, I want to thank you for your work. Love your videos. They, they highly helped me become a best-selling indie author. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, okay. So we got one more point for you and two more prizes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So number four, and this is where I said, I'm going to help you with a little bit of an approach on this. So approach your conversations from a place of service, not of selling. And I talked about this actually in my second book, which was The New Brand You, where I was really talking about building your brand, not specifically from a book, but building your brand. And I, I love this picture that I'd heard somebody paint and I kind of stole it and used it in the book. And I said, imagine that there's a pile of cash sitting in front of you. And instead of stopping and investigating, could it be yours? Whose is it? You just keep walking right on by. And that's what I think the majority of authors do. Uh, because they're either afraid or they're not paying attention to the op the opportunities out there. There are stores, and uh, is it out? No, I just filmed it. Uh, there, I have a I have a video coming out with uh, Dave Frost, and it's really talking about how the people in his network, the interests he has that aren't book specific or business specific, how those are great opportunities to promote his book. And as an author, this is the same thing. Uh, when I launched my second book, uh, I'm really big into CrossFit and I spent a lot of time at the CrossFit gyms. And so I have great relationship with the people there. Um, and that's nothing to do with my book, on the new brand you, but I was able to kind of, Hey, like, I'd love to have an event at your gym. We can get exposure for your gym, promote the book, um, you know, this kind of thing. And so we created a win. I don't even really like the words win, win, but it's kind of the best example of win, win. I'm in front, I'm doing burpees inside of the CrossFit gym. I'm talking about the gym. I'm promoting CrossFit. And the gym was promoting my book to all their members. And it was it was a really win win kind of thing. And that's the kind of opportunity I think people aren't always open, like they're not seeing them. But 
everybody you pass in your J, your dentist, they might put your book on display. So think about all these places. And a lot of people ask, I know my, my dentist, actually, when my book came out, they didn't put my book on display, but they put a poster up on their bulletin board, because they said, we love to promote what our clients are doing. We think it's great. So you just, you got to open your eyes and see those opportunities, because they are everywhere. Now, Here's a fun one, and this is going to be our next prize. So what I want you to do is I want you to type in when somebody says to you, because uh, this just happened to me, by the way. So I'll tell you the story. And now I'll tell you the story while you're doing this. Okay. So so what do you what do you do or what do you say when you run into somebody randomly and they say, oh, I loved your book. What do you say in response? So go ahead and type it in. Um, I'm looking for something in particular. Um, there's a couple ways you can approach it. So I'm, I, mean, I am going to choose a winner from this. Um, but what do you say when somebody comes up to you and says, oh, I loved your book. What do you say in response? And this happened to me a couple weeks ago uh, at CrossFit. <laughs> so uh, this guy said, so I didn't realize you were the Julie Broad who'd written that real estate book. And it was kind of an awkward moment for me at first because I was kind of like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Of course, we were doing our cool down run. So I was also gasping for air still. Um, he said, oh, I read it a couple of years ago. It was an amazing book. He's like, and he just kind of said, thank you for writing it. And and it's really cool that this is that you're the same Julie Broad. And, and he kind of explained that after after seeing me at the gym, he somehow had ended up clicking on my name on Facebook. And that's how he uncovered it. But um, if somebody says that to you, what do you say in response? So um, awesome. OK, you guys are great. You're so smart. <laughs> Um, Kevin 2.0 said, what did you love about it? Mike heard, thank you. How did it help you? Um, Efren says, uh, what did you like best? Aubrey says, thank you. What was your favorite part? All right. You guys know this and hush to roar. So thanks. Do you mind leaving an honest review, please? Yeah, this is great. Okay. You guys already know this. Oh, coin analysis. I'm so glad you're here. I was, I was looking at your name. It's been in the draw quite a few times. It's going to be your turn one of these days. Um, Okay, so, oh, I see Derek. Thank you. How did you find it? How did it help you? Oh, Derek, I didn't even think of that. How did you find it? It's <laughs> That's pretty spectacular. Okay, now I'm torn. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give this to Mike and Derek. It is worth a two-way tie. So Mike heard, thank you. How did you, how did it help you? Um, I like that. And it's a really nice response. And then whatever they say after that, my next thing is really, um, is really, you know, you know, what would be amazing, or you know, what I'd really, really appreciate is if you could leave a honest review um, on Amazon, or from wherever you purchased it. Um, it really just helps me and helps the book and helps other people find the book. So it can help them too. Um, something like that. Uh, you know, I think it's, I always, 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 and always want you to ask for reviews. So that really is the outcome that I'm looking for from this conversation. But I think it helps to know how it helped them. And it kind of connects that conversation a little bit more. Um, I didn't ask that of this person. But again, we had just finished a workout and we were dying. <laughs> uh, and I just really, I didn't even ask for a review in that situation. But again, uh, I'm going to see him again. I see him at CrossFit on a regular basis. So uh, it's a conversation I can always strike up again another day. Uh, but in most situations, so that's to say there's some situations where it's not necessarily going to be uh, an ideal opportunity, because especially right now, we are in that um, socially distancing thing. So, you know, all our conversations are from six, a minimum of six feet apart. <laughs> uh, so we're kind of yelling at each other. But I, I want you to say, you know, thank you. Number one, say thank you. Somebody stepped out of their way. And often it's awkward for them too. In many cases, they kind of feel like a little bit of that, you know, and it's not quite the celebrity, you know, going up to a celebrity kind of feeling, but it is a little bit awkward sometimes, especially if they don't know you super well. So you want to immediately make them feel good for saying that and, and say thank you, and then ask them how it helped them and then ask for a review. So yeah, so awesome answers, you guys. You're professionals out there. I'm really proud. <laughs> so yeah, so you guys, I don't know if you have already won a bunch already, Derek, but um, and Mike heard saying he's already won quite a few times. I'm already a winner. So please choose another bestie for this. Um, all right. And Derek says the same thing as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose backup answers because there were some pretty good ones. And let's see. Um, Aubrey, have you won before? 
um, you, you're pretty close in that. And Hushtavor already won. So um, let's see. And Bonnie, Lacey, you asked straight for a review. So we'll go with that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. Very cool, you guys. These are great answers. Fantastic. That was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, and Andrea nailed it too. All right. <laughs> now I've picked a whole bunch. So Angela, I don't know. <laughs> can you can you untangle what I just did, please? And you can pick two winners. That's okay. Um, so if you can pick two winners from, from what I just did, <laughs> that would be great. That's You guys just got a real look into what our company operates like on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. I go ahead, do something on an impulse, and then go to Angela. Can you clean up my mess, please? <laughs> Entrepreneurs, right? Okay. Uh, so <laughs> let's wrap this all up. Um, so I just want you guys to think about, which was great. You guys already have the right mindset. So I'm, I'm really pumped. I almost feel like I don't have to cover this, but I'm going to cover it because I don't know who's going to be watching the replay or who didn't answer the question. So as an author, um, I really want you to think about coming at things from a place of service. So that's why I want to understand how, you know, how did it help you? Because um, that also will help you with good information for anything else you're doing. Um, and really, ultimately, you want to kind of go, um, is there another opportunity to, ser to serve? And by understanding how, when you go, how did it help you? It may open up the door to serve. And whenever you serve, um, it ultimately not always, but it often leads to an opportunity to sell. I mean, YouTube is something I do because it's fun. I can help a lot of people. And ultimately, serving all of you grows book launchers. It's been a phenomenal tool for selling what we do at book launchers. Um, and it's one of those things where I do it from a place of service, but it leads to selling in a lot of cases. So now take a look. Um, one of the most common things is networking. And it was, it'll come back, it will come back. Um, and when you speak, so in your networking situation, a lot of people say networking doesn't work. But I want to just kind of draw attention to when you speak, is it all about you? And we talk about this in writing all the time too, right for the reader. Um, but I want to share one of the coolest things I think one of the coolest deals I ever struck. Um, and I've talked about the deal before, but I haven't actually talked about how it came about. Um, and so really, you want to just talk, you want to consider the person you're speaking with and what will matter to them. Um, and so of course, you have to understand what problem you solve. But really, you want to just ask questions. And so one of the deals I did um, for more than cash flow was a partnership with Canadian Real Estate Wealth Magazine. It's a magazine that is perfectly positioned to go in front of investors, which was who my book was for. And I was actually speaking to someone on their team about an upcoming event uh, that I was doing a small speaking engagement for, or uh, yeah, I was doing a speaking engagement. And so I was talking to them about this event and there's some questions I always ask if I don't know the answer. And this was, this was one of their first events. And I said, okay, so what do, what do you want the speaker? Um, what do you really want the speaker to do? when they're not on stage. Some events want them to network with the attendees. Some want them to post it on social media. You know, there's different things. So I wanted them to understand what do they want the speakers to do when they're not on stage. Um, so outside of the speaking uh, tasks, if you will, I really want to understand who's in the audience, but I really want to understand who they want the talk to appeal to. So who they want to be in the audience. Uh, and ultimately doing this, I heard from quite a few people over the years that they they went to the Canadian Real Estate Wealth Magazine events because of the talk that I had put up there. Um, and so my understanding of who they wanted to appeal to did ultimately help them attract that person. But this is the big one. And this is where a lot of people don't always ask. Um, but I asked them, how do you generate revenue from this event? Like, what makes this a successful event for you? And it was that last question in that conversation that led to this opportunity, because they started talking about how, because um, it was a magazine that held these investor forums, I think they still do them, I think they used to do them in cities all across Canada. Now I think they just do one a year. Um, but they they said that they started doing them because they got a lot of magazine subscription signups from the events and then they made money through sponsorships but they they were really trying to drive magazine subscriptions because that drives ad revenue so 
I, and then they said that, and I, I kind of said, well, what else has worked for you other than these events? And they said, when we give away books, um, when we give away books to people who subscribe for two years or more um, of our magazine, then we always see an uptick in magazine subscriptions. And I said, oh, that's cool. I'm about to come out with a book. <laughs> what kind of books are you looking for? Um, and ultimately, I ended up getting a really cool deal where I gave them 250 copies of my book. And they promoted, so all those magazine, you know, those cards that fall out of magazines, my book was on that for, I think it was three or four months. They kept running the promotion as long as they still had uh, books on hand. And they gave me magazine advertising space. They promoted my book at their upcoming investor forum events, because the more valuable my book was, the more valuable that subscription was going to be. And all it cost me was 250 books. I got a ton. I got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of exposure. And I became their go-to partner for a lot of years. Uh, it was it was a, an amazing partnership. And it all started with me just asking, like, what works for you? What are you trying to achieve? How are you trying to achieve it? And boom, I unlocked one of the greatest marketing opportunities for my book and for my brand. So those things don't happen if you're quiet. It also doesn't happen if you're talking about yourself. Um, and frankly, in my case, I'm generally uncomfortable talking about myself. I'm curious about others. I ask questions and sometimes they reveal ways that I can help. Um, and so I'm really just giving that as an example to open your eyes up and your mind up to the opportunity that when you come into every conversation, every opportunity, kind of looking for a way that you might be of service and you're not always going to be able to be of service. And sometimes, you know, those those questions will lead to dead ends and you won't have any way to help them, but you've learned and People don't mind usually that you've answered, asked them questions um, to understand how you might be able to help them. But coming into it from that place and not necessarily coming at it looking for a way to sell books, but just trying to understand the other side can lead to some really, really cool opportunities. So, phew, we packed a lot into today, didn't we? So really, ultimately, it comes down to being brave enough to stand out, defining yourself, Really, how are you writing that book to define yourself? So you have to define yourself first and then using that identity, that author identity to reach out and get out there, be seen. Building that brand requires that you're doing the podcast, you're doing the media, you're on social media if that's appropriate for you. You're out there, but your book is that tool that will allow you to get exposure that can be quite hard to get when you're not, when you don't have this thing that goes like, I'm an expert, I wrote the book on it. Um, and then ultimately, look for opportunities because they're everywhere. Think of that pile of cash that you just stepped over because you weren't looking for opportunities and look for those opportunities to serve, not sell. Um, so I got one more YouTube draw for you. <clears throat> Before I do that, I'm going to check for questions. And also, I just want to remind you for anybody that's ducking off here because we did go long. I went so long, I'm losing my voice. Um, Saturday, October 17th, our next deep dive training we're doing all things Amazon. This is going to be really, really cool training. So sign up through the community tab or the launch letter. If you're not getting the launch letter, you can get it at booklaunchers.com. Sign up for our newsletter and I'll be sending out another link on Friday. So if you don't have it, you'll get it then. You have to register and you have to be there live. There's no replay. Um, we provide really amazing content uh, train, like really, really high value training. This is not a sales session at all. Sometimes I even forget to mention <laughs> that we have a service. <laughs> My team's like, you could have told them about the link to apply. <laughs> it is not a sales session. We are there to give you amazing content, but we won't put it out on a replay. So you got to be there live. Um, so that's happening October 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So it'd be great to have you all there. It's a great chance for us all to connect. And we're going to answer questions about Amazon. If you've written a book, we'll take your Amazon page and we'll take a look at it. Um, so you're, there's the opportunity to kind of do a hot seat. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really, really great session. So that's happening on Saturday. All right. So let me do the last YouTube draw and then uh, I'll look for any last minute questions and then we can say adios or hasta luego, um, something like that. Okay. The winner is da, 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 Sandra Rodriguez. Now that's a YouTube bestie that maybe hasn't won. So <laughs> Sandra, congratulations. Email us at team at booklaunches.com and let us know if you want the mug or the journal. Um, if you have one, I know it's been a long time, so I'm really excited for you. That's great. Um, all right, so let's just see here. Um, to look at asking questions was not something I would have done. Great. That's awesome. Glad to hear it. Uh, question, Tom Black, what is your advice for promoting a controversial book? Depends on what 
it's controversial around because there's a lot of subjects that can be controversial. Um, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, if it's controversial, yeah, I mean, it really depends on how it's controversial. I would look for like-minded people because there's a podcast, a blog, a talk, like a group out there anywhere that's going to talk about it. Um, so that would be where I would start. That's where we always start is where are the people who already agree with this, who already think this way? Um, where are they already hanging out? And that's where I would start with that. So um, especially, I mean, the cool thing about controversial books is when you find those like-minded people, as long as you've got a slightly different spin, slightly different angle, you're quite likely to get um, to get it read. True crime was, it's not controversial, but true crime is, is, is a little bit like when you hit on, you kind of hit on a topic people uh, are divided on, um, they get hungry for more. So they just want to devour everything in that category. And that can be the case depending on what you're controversial on. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just reading everybody's here. Angela, if there's any other comments I need. Um, Hey, Walter. <laughs> hey, that's a that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. It's great to see you here. All right. Okay, I think we've got them all. <laughs> Two in a row, Kevin. <laughs> um, with, with a win. I don't think your streak is over because I think this is actually three in a row. Um, I'll have to go back and check, but I feel like you were on a streak. <laughs> um, childhood trauma, particularly sexual abuse. Uh, yeah. And it, yeah, that's great. That's um, she's just sorry. I'm I'm giving you half of the conversation here. So Hush to Roar, my book Hush to Roar is on childhood trauma, particularly sexual abuse. I mentioned stop it now, so I'll be reaching out to them. That was a tip I got from you. So that's great. Thank you very much. And we have promoted. Um, we've had a few books that were uh, you know on one was on called Men Too, and it was about male sexual abuse, and it was a it was a, it's a heavy topic and. There, but the what we did find was there are groups that are talking about this. They want material like this. So there's always angles. There's always opportunities. You just have to find your like-minded people and the people who are already talking to the people that you want to talk to and connect with them. Um, and that book gives you a great opportunity to do so because you wrote the book on blank, right? Fill in the blank. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to sign off before I lose my voice completely. <laughs> It was such a pleasure to hang out with you today. You guys were amazing. I am so excited for your answers uh, and for your participation today. It was really, really great. Thank you, Angela, for being here. And uh, and Kevin also, um, Kevin McGuire is also an admin on here to help me monitor and manage the chat over there. So, so thank you to both of you. And I hope to see many of you on Saturday for our All Things Amazon Deep Dive Training. So have a fantastic day. This is Julie the Book Broad signing off.